so I deliberately made it short and sweet. I have lots of links that I've referenced, and I will, uh, all those links put up on YouTube, they'll be in the more section. So you guys will be able to grab all of these links. But my goal today is for you not to grow a garden like this. That's my goal right now for this presentation. <laughs> Don't grow this. We're not going to grow this. We're going to grow this, or this, or this one even, or this one in a school, more school gardens, or this indoor tower garden, right? So I'm gonna give you guys some basic tools and references on where to go. And I'm gonna keep this pretty short um, because my goal is not to turn you into tower garden experts. It's to show you, you have so much at your fingertips and this is so easy. So we're gonna start with the very basics of what a tower garden is. So again, it's vertical, it's a hydroponic. It's a form of hydroponics called aeroponics. There is no soil, there's very little water, it's clean, it's less pests, no weeding, and it's very easy to grow beautiful tower gardens like this. Um, no soil, no weeds. I like to just really give you that information because a lot of times people don't realize they think it's filled with soil. So as you can see here, this is the inside of the tower garden. Beautiful, clean roots and a beautiful plant growing out the top side of it. And how it works is there's water in the base, so water runs up to the top drips down over the roots of the plants. The plants are little babies in there. They're given everything they need. They have their own little microclimate that's sort of controlled and it, they're fed and watered on a schedule and they get lots and lots of oxygen. So my first thing to tell you is do not worry about it. Don't worry about anything. The tower garden practically takes care of itself. You just need to know the basics and you need to give it water and you need to give it food and it's gonna practically grow itself. So first, let's talk about setting up your tower garden. It is promise it's less than two minutes, and it's the only video I'm going to show, and I'm going to start it in the middle. But I just want you guys to see how easy it is to set it up. On the nutrient reservoir, mm -hmm. remove wing nut and washer from the top end of the rods. Choose any tower section and locate a pair of holes marked B inside the section. Thread the rods through these two holes. Slide the tower section down the rods to the first section. Push down firmly on the center stem to fit with the first tower section. Now you continue stacking. The third section goes through the holes marked A, the fourth through the holes marked B, and the fifth and final section goes through the holes marked A. Once all the tower sections are in place, install the shower cap. Push down firmly on the center step garden. You should feel or see the small lip snap into place. Okay, so there were a couple of reasons why I wanted to show you guys that. The first one is I wanted you to see that there are some very well done videos from Tower Garden out there for you. If you go to YouTube and go to Tower Garden, there's several of them. And the second reason is I want you guys to see that the Tower Garden snaps together like Legos. So there, there's a book that comes with the garden that will show you how to do everything. And there's also the video that will come with the garden and is an, available on YouTube. And you can put that tower garden together. I can put it together in like 11 minutes. But if you're brand new, it's probably going to take you about 30 minutes to put it together. So that's my first thing. You're going to put your tower garden together. Then you're going to add water. I'm going to use just your garden hose water. Um, city water is fine. Well water is fine. Um, RO water is fine. Filtered water is fine. The important thing that I want you guys to know is that if you're using city water, your city is gonna add either chlorine or chloramine to that water source. Now, and where I live right here, it's chlorine. And so if your city uses chlorine, you're gonna use this filter right here, and the, the links are available for you guys. Um, and that will remove enough of the chlorine and enough of the sediments that your tower will go great. Now, if your city's adding chloramine, chloramine is a chlorine ammonia mixture that is stabilizes the chlorine so you can't remove it with this filter here then you just got to upgrade to this filter right here and either both of these are available from amazon um, the only way you know if your city is doing that is just google your city and look at the water quality report and you will see that they either added chlorine or chloramine very simple to do that so um after you add the water, you've assembled it, now you add the water, now you're going to add tower tonic, and the tower tonic comes in an A and a B. It's pure earth and sea minerals, okay? Hundreds of different minerals for your plants. Very easy, you just flip the bottle over and you follow the directions on the back, 
exactly as it tells you to add. It has a little measuring cup. It says, for this number of gallons, then you add this much tar tonic. Now, two exceptions, when, and these are in the book, but when you first start out, you're going to use half-strength nutrients because your little babies or your seeds that you put in the tower don't need all of the nutrients. So this will save you some money. And when the temperatures are greater than 85, you're going to use half-strength nutrients also. You, when the temperatures are greater than 95, you can go down to a quarter strength. The reason why is the water is evaporating faster than the minerals. We don't want the mineral concentration to get too high, so we're going to go down to half strength minerals when the temperature is greater than 85. The next thing you're going to do after you add the minerals is you're going to test the pH. Again, simple. There's a video that tells you exactly how to do it. It's just like a pool. You can use the, the pH test kit that comes with the tower. Or once, if you have a lot of towers or you're, you know, you're tired of using the little drops, because you can actually buy some meters that are very inexpensive and work very well. They're electronic. Um, but you just follow the instructions in the pH test your kit. So, and you want your pH between 5.5 and 6.5. It'll tell you that in the book. If your pH is too high, you add pH down. If your pH is too low, you add pH up. When you first start out, add a tablespoon at a time and mix it thoroughly. Because you what you just kind of you kind of want to test and see how much you're going to need. Keep track of that. How many tablespoons? The next time you go to fill up your tower garden, you know how many tablespoons per gallon you need to adjust your tower garden, and that makes it very simple to do. Um, after you do that, then you're going to set your timer. So the the water we don't want it constantly raining down on the roots of the plants. They don't need all that much water. And secondly. The, the, one of the beautiful things about the tower garden is that the plants get a lot of oxygen. The water turns off, the roots are hanging in oxygen that allows for 30% greater growth, faster growth, and stronger plants. So you're going to set your timer for 15 minutes on. So one pin on, one pin down, one pin out, one pin down. In cooler seasons, you can go 15 minutes on, 30 off. If you're growing indoors, the instructions will tell you go 15 minutes on, 45 off. So you're going to set that timer. That timer is going to turn the pump on and off. Um, let's talk about seedlings next and growing seedlings. So seedlings, the next thing you're going to do, you know, you got the tower all set up. You got it plugged in. You got the timer. Very easy, right? 30 minutes it took you. Now you're going to start your seedlings. And you can grow seedlings outside or you can grow seedlings inside with a grow light. You can direct seed. See right here, I took the Rockwell cube put it in the tower garden and added the seeds. This concept is not that hard. It's just like putting seeds in the ground. But in this case, we're putting seeds in the little Rockwell cube, all right? Um, or you can start your seeds in a tray um, and not direct seeds and then just put seedlings in. Same thing as the ground, guys. You can either put seeds in the ground or you can put seedlings in the ground, right? So it's the tower is no different. This is not rocket science. So to start your own seedlings, either you're going to put seeds right in the rock wall and pop it in the tower garden, or you're going to, you're going to do this. And here you're going to soak your, your rock wall. And the rock wall is fun volcanic rock. It's a very, <clears throat> just a little substance for the little roots to get started in. Very simple stuff. Um, you add the rock wall into a bucket of water. You soak it for 30 minutes, plain water. Now the reason why I have excess here is it comes with this little container here cut the top off right away because that top will flip over on top of your plants and if you have it out in the sun will cook your plants so just cut that plastic top off i hate that thing and this vermiculite right here you can throw it away you don't need it the instructions will tell you to use it i don't need it i find it to be messy and unnecessary so follow me or follow the instructions you know but then you take your rock your soaked rock wall and you just add your seeds simple how many seeds though everybody wants to know how many seeds the rule of thumb is one to two seeds for large plants and head lettuce, like romaine or bib lettuce. Five to seven seeds for herbs and spring mix um, and um, spinach. So, um, you can even, so if you don't know, just ask your rep because they've done this a million times. They'll be able to tell you, but that's the rule of thumb. And then you want to make sure your seedling now gets light. This is very important. You can grow your seedling in sunlight, or you can grow it with a grow light. And I do have a video on growing seedlings with grow lights that does tell you where to get the grow lights and which ones I recommend. 
So my, my tips are make sure your seedlings get light right away. You want to put them right out in the sunlight or right away in the grow light, okay? You don't need to gradually move them out. You don't need to let them spend the night inside and then the next day outside. Just put them right out in the sunlight, all right? And you can transplant at any size. The garden guide is going to tell you wait till they're an inch tall. You can put them in at any size. Small, medium, large, doesn't matter, okay? Very simple. So here's some examples of seedlings that did not get enough lights. And when that happens, they've grown leggy. So and this is a marijuana plant. <laughs> I didn't grow this, but it's what I found on Google. <laughs> but I thought it was the best picture. But you can see how there's a really tall stem right here um, that we don't want that. And here, these plants are fluffy, they're pale, they're falling over, and they have large stems. And so you want these nice, strong, see how strong these look? They're nice and green. These are under grow lights and they're compact. So we got, you know, just a, a short stem when then we start the leaves. Green means will grow taller, but they're still nice and healthy looking. So if your plants are getting, if your seedlings are getting leggy, you're off to a bad start, throw them away, start over because they're gonna make weak plants. And that's a number one problem I see is people do not give their seedlings enough sunlight. Then once you've got the seedlings, then what do you do? Well, you're gonna plant them in the tower. So we plant a tower like a pyramid with the, with the tall things on the top and then the wide things going down and out, all right? So like here, they have Swiss chard at the top. You can put celery at the top and they've got lettuces and then they're gonna do, start doing kale and um, some broccoli and eggplant finally down at the bottom and tomatoes. I do have my, this is my cheat sheet that I use and um, it actually shows me, you know, some warm weather plants, some cool weather plants, and what to plant on the bottom, what to plant near the bottom, what to plant near the middle, what to plant near the top, and what to plant at the very top level. So this is my little cheat sheet that I made to give people. If you guys need it, just let me know or let your rep know. Um, but you know, there's also, on, um, on uh, the internet, there's a fantastic article about how to plant your tower garden. And the link is in the links that I provided for you guys. So again, everything you need is on the Tower Garden website. They have just done a fantastic job. Now we're going into winter. So I just want to touch on winter gardening. Um, right now you can grow just about everything. Um, your, the things that are going to do, the, it'd be the easiest, are the plants that don't mind a freeze at all. The, um, and, and all of these right here can handle a Florida freeze. So lettuce, we can't grow potatoes in the tower garden, but peas, broccoli, spinach, turnips. Now there's some frost sensitive plants that you can certainly plant right now, but you'll just need to make sure that when a freeze comes, you cover them or you move them inside. If they're a small plant, you can pop them out and bring them inside and put them in the sink. If they're a great big plant, just cover it when you get a freeze with a frost cloth or just move the whole tower garden inside your garage, all right? So this is this is because we're going into winter, but keep in mind that one month before the last frost date, you can literally plant everything. And I say one month before because those little baby plants are gonna be very easy to protect if we get a freeze. So, and like where I am, the last frost date is March 31st. So March 1st, I will put everything in the tower, tomatoes, kale, lettuces, um, the uh, watermelon, um, pumpkin, anything that, you know, I'm worried about freezing, I'll stick it in because it'll stay warmer in the tower garden than it would in the ground because we can protect it and because the tower garden is a microclimate, that water keeps everything warmer all through winter. That's my little tip for you. Okay, do you want to grow indoors or outdoors? So we'll talk about that. So if, so, you know, grow, you can grow greens and we're talking about kale and bok choy and lettuce and spinach and cilantro and herbs with four to five hours of sunlight outside, a minimum of four to five hours of sunlight outside, or indoors with the T5 grow lights that come with Tower Garden. I'm not gonna make you guys an expert on grow lights. What I want you to know is when, what, I just want you to be aware that there are times when grow lights are appropriate and times when they're not, and specific grow lights that you want to use, okay? So for instance, here's my shade garden that I grew in four to five hours of shade. Um, you guys can see that on YouTube. 
Um, and I have lots of different beautiful green plants. I actually grew this in three hours of shade. Three is, that's it, that's it. Um, and then here's a garden inside with the T5 grow lights, with the different greens, and the different herbs, okay? So the way I like to do indoor gardens is with direct seeding. So here I pop the seeds in, 28 plants, pop the seeds in, have the lights on for 14 hours a day. By day 12, all the seeds have sprouted, and by day 32, look what we have. So can you imagine a whole tower garden full of lettuce and greens and herbs inside your house, you know, in your kitchen that you can just snip off of and eat? I can because I've done it and I love it. But now, you can grow greens and flowering plants like tomatoes and cucumber and strawberries with six to eight hours of sunlight or with specialty grow lights. So let's look at this indoor one that Jill um, grew. So I love this. She grew, she's got her blue spectrum T5 grow lights from Tower Garden on all of her greens. And then she's got these specialty red spectrum lights on her tomatoes. She said these were the best tomatoes she's ever eaten in her whole life, including when she's grown outdoors. And this wonderful little system that she has. Um, but see, she, I call this specialty because she really got creative here. Here we have Christine, and Christine grew one tomato plant in a tower garden with the uh, grow lights that were, they're actually red and blue spectrum. Um, wonderful grow lights that will, will um, this plant grew for 18 months. This is sort of at the, right before it was pulled, so it's not as beautiful as what she had, but it's one, she got thousands of tomatoes off of it over 18 months. Um, this, you guys can go back and you can reference this when I post this video. But again, I'm not wanting you guys to be experts. I'm not trying to make you guys experts. I did put a link on, in there about growing indoors. So you guys will have to just reference that. But I just wanted you guys to know, don't try to put a tomato plant inside with the wrong grow lights. 3% less pests in the tower garden in general because we don't have the ground pests because our plants are so strong and healthy. Okay, my best pest control recipe is all I ever use. If you are scared of pests, go ahead and use this once a week. Spray your tower every night with this combination of neem oil and cell suds. The recipe for it is in the links, okay? If you're scared of bugs, if you don't know if you know how to take care of your tower, go ahead and just spray it every week. The tower garden is going to love you because that neem oil provides some nutrients and the cell suds does too. There's some essential oils in there that will make your plants very healthy and very beautiful. If you are more comfortable with bugs and you want to wait until you see bugs on your tower, then just wait until you see bugs on your tower and then attack them. Again, is always spray it in the evening after the sun has started to go down because then the bees have gone to bed. We don't want to spray bees with even this natural, totally you know, organic stuff. We don't want to kill the bees. And then in the morning, rinse it off because you don't want the sunlight to react with the oil and the soap and burn your plants. Okay, so we have covered all the basics. Everything else is online, everything. This is on the Tower Garden blog and I put the link to it. So how to harvest lettuce, tomatoes, basil, chives, parsley, how to um, hand, hand pollinate plants that need hand pollinating, more growing tomatoes, what to do about bolting. I mean, everything you need is online. So go ahead and ask your rep. I have this question, send them a picture or put it on Facebook with your group because everybody who's growing a tower garden is going to be put in a, a customer group and somebody will say, hey, okay, here's the article that will solve that problem. But if you have some time in your hands, just go to towergarden.com and look at the blog and look through these articles. Just amazing. They're very detailed, like how to grow tomatoes. It tells you the variety. It tells you pest control, how to prune, how to harvest. There's videos and it's also written out. I mean, Fabulous. Tower Garden has done a phenomenal job with this. You're never going to grow alone, guys. You have a rep. You're going to email, call, or text your rep. You're going to have a Facebook group. You can call Tower Garden. They have a hotline. You can log on to Tower Talk or you can browse the blog. And um, Tower Garden compliments Juice Plus. I got to give a nod to our sponsor here. Juice Plus is 30 different fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. We flood our body with Juice Plus every day. There's over 30 different published research studies that show Juice Plus does in your body what eating large amounts of produce would do in your body. It's a whole food, has fantastic farming practices, it's third-party certified, and it's the most researched nutrition product in the world. 
Number one, children get it free when adults take it. And Tower Garden is also a business and our marketing plan is right here. It's in the links. You guys can go look if it's something, if you want a business for yourself. So that's all I have to share with you guys today. And I'm gonna stop sharing here. And I would love to know if you guys have questions for me. And Beth said, would love your cheat sheet. Absolutely, you can have it. Mia, you assembled it all by yourself. Did you find it hard? No, it was really simple, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was going back and forth between the directions and actually doing it. So I figured my accent would be faster, but yeah, I was able to do it all by myself, so. Good, good. Um, turn your base. I guess I sometimes people ask me that. In the book it says sometimes to rotate it. Um, I guess it depends on where my tower is in my own yard. I have a couple that I seem to have to turn and then sometimes I don't. So I just wondered if, I, if other people do that. <laughs> well, that's a good question. And I'm a really lazy tower gardener and the way I do it, like, <laughs> like my tower garden closest to my house gets a lot of shade. So what I've done is I put plants that don't mind the shade on the shady side and then I've got my tomato plants on the sunny side. And that's how I solve that. You know, if, you, if you're not getting a whole lot of sun on one side of your tower garden, you can rotate it just like you said, like a quarter turn every couple days, or you can put shady plants. They're gonna grow a little slower when you have less sun. But, you know, it all depends on your personality, I think, is whether yeah. or not you heard it. <laughs> I'm lazy too, I neglect it. I. Um, we had a little class at our house this weekend and the word pH apparently freaks people out. They think it sounds complicated or scientific and um, we took a little poll and out of the few people, three people were afraid of the word pH. It scared them. It made them feel like this seems so complicated. So we went out and we did the pH and they couldn't believe how easy it was. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I love that Tower Garden made a video of it. Yeah. So, you know, and they, they kind of overcomplicate it. They're like, wear gloves, you know. Who does that? Who goes out there with gloves? Nobody. <laughs> so, stick my hand in there and stir it. I don't put yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one thing I miss saying is stir, stir your nutrients and be, put your A in, stir it. Put your B in, stir it. Yeah. That's one thing I miss talking about. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Did you cover, I'm not sure I was to and fro a little bit, but did you cover um, maybe the advantages of growing a tower compared to, I'm sure you probably did, the advantages of growing a tower compared to soil? No, I didn't get into that at all. Okay. Um, just, just because um, it's just kind of a whole nother um, topic. Um, and there's so, so many. Well, I was just thinking if you could just like quick bullet point, not necessarily go into the details of them, but um, you know, when you just bullet points of, you probably said at some point there's no weeding, no digging, um, but the fact of it using less water, less space, yes, less maintenance, just those things, because people yes. think with a garden, oh, it's too much hard work, it's all this stuff I need to do and need to know, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah. Well, well you know, it's bullet like, points. Yeah, it's like, you know, I went I went on a cruise, right? But uh -huh. before I left on the cruise, I filled it up, I added my nutrients. I came back and the water level was only down like that much. Yeah. If I had a regular garden, I would come back from that cruise five days. I would be weeding. Mm -hmm. you know? I would be dealing with pests. I had no bug problems. I would be watering that sad garden. But it's just so easy, you know, and like you said, we're using, I, I actually compared water usage and I, I figured out we use 3.3% of the water if we're growing greens mm -hmm. right in the ground. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And then no nematodes, no ground pests is huge. Mm -hmm. no tilling, no weeding, faster growth, better nutrition value in there compared to, you know, compared to NASA when they grew their ground garden they had 80% greater nutrient density in the tower garden, you know, compared to the ground garden. So that's huge too. So it's just uh, uh, so many advantages of growing your ground. Uh, good point. Why, why a tower garden versus the ground garden? 
And in my instance, um, I had a nice farmer who thought he was helping me out. I was trying to have ground cover. So I would have some greenery in my backyard. And um, he, Farmer Allen tilled my garden last co-op. So everybody came over and they're like, what's in your garden? There's nothing planted in the ground garden. <laughs> Fresh tube. And I'm like, look at these four towers. They're so full. Why would I go down there? I said, one day I thought about, throw, I th actually, I threw a couple cloves of garlic in there. And then the rest of it, I said, there's so much dirt bending, the work, sweat, the bugs. I said, I can't even find myself to plant this ground garden anymore. I, I yeah. mean, I'm less and less even mm -hmm. desired myself to even do it. A pot, a pot of carrots, yeah. a pot of beets. I'm happy. That's it. Oh, and I did your trick with the beets on the top. And so I have that going. And we uh, snapped off and we tasted the leaves. And they taste exactly like beets. Everybody loved it. And um, I just, honestly, I, the, mo the older, I'm getting, I'm older than most of you. And I have a bad back. And that is, that is true. People that know me have known me for years. They've known I've had huge ground gardens, and now I've got more towers and nothing in my ground but a garlic. <laughs> <laughs> what do you suggest for people who have patios? Like, oftentimes they're at a slant, so it'll drain. Mm. What do you recommend they use to level it? Like, right now I've just got some cardboard under one side of mine. Wooden shim. Oh, there you go. I mean, it's not going to be permanent. Eventually, you have to replace it, but it will definitely last longer than the cardboard. And oh, hang on, that's my dad. I'm coming back. Um, <laughs> now, I and I would put it underneath the reservoir top, not the but not the reservoir Excellent. tub, because I once put one under the reservoir tub, and because of that lip on the bottom where it's not all flat there, it's just started to push that lip up and you could see it from the inside of the tub, it was starting to crack oh, and, yeah. and kind of misshapen because it's got 180 pounds or whatever pushing down on it. So I just put it between the reservoir and, the, and that white reservoir top. I, I learned something tonight, wooden shims under the lid, not under the base. And I, I, I don't know why I never thought about that. That's brilliant. So, all right, guys, thank you. Have a great night.